If you are staying for Thanksgiving camp on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we have approval from Mr. Whittington to take our DOT 7 exam, which is scheduled for Friday morning, on Wednesday afternoon. You have to see your DOT 7 teacher face to face and have a conversation about that exam on Wednesday. Okay, do not make the assumption that you're going to just wake up Wednesday morning, stroll into somebody's classroom, and have an exam in front of you. Find that DOT 7 teacher. I cannot emphasize that enough. Don't wait till the last minute. Okay? Enjoy your weekend. first year two and I'm missing a lot of days in February I'm going away for a speed camp at Sugarloaf that's a week long a month and a half after that I'll be missing most of it and I'll be home for like around 11 days so I'll be missing a lot of school and a lot of classes. The biggest challenge is, is uh, time. Athletes who need to travel for competition are traveling over the weeks where kids who aren't doing that are back here uh, attending classes every day. So there's a challenge to keep those kids up to speed and, and to replicate to the largest degree possible uh, the experience they would have in the classroom. We have 205 kids that are on snow every day. We have Sunday River, which is our greatest supporter. Uh, six miles down the road. And I think, you know, for us as an institution to find our identity, we need to find the families that value academics and want a high level athletic experience. The ideal is that we're trying to provide um, kids the opportunity to excel um, academically while still being able to perform at the highest level in their on snow pursuits. In order for us to get to the races we need to and to compete at, at the level that we need to, we need to travel more. You really have to go to all the major competitions because colleges aren't looking at high school meets or, or high school state qualifiers. They're looking at how do you compete against the best in New England. The expectations to perform in the classroom are just as high as the expectations to perform on the slopes. It's a challenge. You know, and, and can you have both? I think you can. Um, I think you have to work that much harder to try to achieve both. And I think that's where as an institution, we've recognized that on snow is an important piece of who we are and what we want to be. And that we're starting to understand the true challenges that some of our athletes face when we travel. Performing academically, performing at a high level athletically require uh, incredible commitment and of time and energy. And when you're trying to do both at the same time, uh, it also requires a lot of support. What can we do to kind of fill that gap to, to um, improve communication, to improve support? There's one thing that we've done which I believe is the solution to every challenge, and it's really simple, is get the right people on the bus and get them in the right seats on the bus. And Cindy Brown is uh, just the right person to understand uh, what athletes need, what coaches need, what teachers need, and what parents need. The addition of Cindy Brown this year was an effort to try to bring in somebody who has some experience 
um, both as a coach, as a teacher, as a parent, um, who can really understand what the student athletes are trying to balance. Basically, it's um, one person to keep track of those kids that are missing the most school um, so that they have an additional support in addition to their coaches, their teachers, their advisor, the supports that are already in place. Um, one more adult supporting their efforts. There's so many people receiving these messages um, and there's so many people keeping up to date on students' progress that the students don't get lost. And, and that's, I think, the most important thing. That they don't, their education doesn't get lost when their athletics um, takes this, this jump up. It's a lot of different people coming in from a lot of different angles, all saying, what can we do to support these kids so that they can continue to study at a pretty high academic level and compete at a high level? And how can we support them, especially during the winter, so their grades don't suffer while they're missing a lot of school? It's sort of an academic advisor program for the On Snow athletes because a lot of us are missing quite a bit of school. She sort of bridges the gap between that whole, like on, your on snow life and your academic life, and she makes sure everything goes smoothly without you know, any like last minute panic attacks. Like, I gotta get this done, oh my god, I didn't know about this. <laughs> so, it's, it's really helpful. Her role is to uh, work with those kids on being advocates for themselves, to help them build the communication skills. Now, one thing I'm trying to be very conscious of is making sure that the student athletes are the ones talking to the teachers because I think that's such an important skill to learn and to take with them into college so that they really learn to advocate for themselves. Uh, athletes are uh, coming to teachers early to find out assignments, to ask um, uh, to miss classes um, so they can be kept in touch with what's going on in the classroom. I feel um, as though it's the student's responsibility to check in with me before they go and to follow up on anything that we've agreed to. If you want to meet with a teacher, it's usually up to you. You have to shoot them an email. You have to schedule appointments if you need extra help. I think as long as you're being, you're taking the actions to show that you care about your work and you really want to get up to speed, then they'll definitely work with you because they respect that you have to take time off to compete. I think this whole experience is huge in terms of preparing them for life beyond Gould. Um, you know, they have to take responsibility for themselves and understand that other people are there to help, but only if there's enough communication. It's empowering. Um, they're the ones that, that oftentimes will set the schedule and, and take responsibility to keep the schedule. And um, Oh, I think it's a, it's a pretty, pretty valuable life skill. My skills with teachers and educators that I've gained here will really help me in the future. It's challenging for faculty as well. Um, it's not the same as having all the kids in the classroom day in and day out. Obviously with the computers, so much more can be digital. Um, I know in my class, I, I make every effort um, to post anything that I'm giving them in class digitally on the info server. We have uh, a new technology platform now that uh, enables kids to take a lot of what they do on the road and even uh, in some cases to view classes that have taken place while they're gone. The new laptops are um, a huge step in the right direction because you can be confident that the kid is using the same tools um, wherever they are that you're using uh, in class. Uh, things like Google Docs. What I really like is Google Docs which allows you to collaborate with users in real time for group work, it's a great tool, and I use it a lot. It's certainly not a one-size-fits-all, so for some students it may be, um, you know, a video that, that gets uploaded so that they can just see what went on in class. Sometimes, like, if you miss a lot of conceptual things you miss in class, it's a little difficult to catch up on those things. And I thought, wow, I can do a 10-minute video explanation of, of what we did in class and what I'm expecting them to do outside of class. In 10 or 15 minutes I can explain enough of the work, hopefully, so that they can be somewhat successful working on it on their own. At first I was skeptical about using technology because it can be difficult and I was worried I wasn't going to be able to hear them, but I did a French conversation and I actually understood it, so Skype's pretty good. You know, to somehow bring the classroom to our kids um, when, when they really need it is 
something that we're all looking for different ways to, to do. It is an interesting role for me to be in because I want to be very conscious when I'm up in the comp center that I allow the student athletes to be athletes up there and uh, be careful about not asking them if they got their chemistry homework turned in as they're running out the door to go train gates or, or uh, practice aerials. There are times for multitasking and then there are times and, you know, where multitasking can be detrimental and when you're cruising down a hill at 50, 60, <laughs> 70 miles an hour, probably not a good idea to have something in the back of your mind going, oh, there's a paper due. <laughs> We've definitely learned some lessons from years past. Uh, we put some things in place that, uh, that we're pretty confident will help us move forward on meeting this challenge as students, as teachers, as an institution. Um, I think we're definitely making some big strides in the right direction. There's no other school that I'm aware of that is a traditional, comprehensive, independent boarding school and has a, um, a resource like Sunday River that's so close by. Our relationship with Sunday River over the last five years has been great. It's been one of the, the most rewarding parts of my job. Uh, uh, to see how that's developed and, and flourished over time. What we're trying to do there is so big and uh, sometimes so complicated that a very high level of, uh, of a sense of partnership and problem-solving approach is, is really important and we've, we've really enjoyed that. It is a challenge to miss 30% of the second trimester and do well academically. I think at the end of the day it's our goal try to get the student athletes to the highest level they're capable of. With greater success come greater challenges and uh, we're trying to rise and meet those greater challenges. We're, uh, you know, we're pretty proud of those kids and, and uh, we want them to succeed. So there are a lot of things that we're doing to take on what is a very unique challenge for a school like ours, which is to be the very best in both of these areas. I feel pretty good about where we are, but we haven't we haven't stopped striving to be even better. It's hard work. It's good work. It's uh, it's what we're here for.